So a nice sunny day again. All the hay is finished. And the reason for that is there are showers coming. Anyone who's watched most of my videos will know that I use my little 35 a lot for moving stuff and the only way I can move stuff with it is by using this fork. Uh, which is probably the handiest, most effective thing I've ever made. It's just a simple three-point linkage fork made from an old McHale bale hander. Uh, just with the two uh, long spikes on it and it can be used for absolutely anything. I use it for moving pallets, for lifting anything, for pushing things. You can even use it as a bale spike. Um, and if you put the rollers on it is possible to move uh, wrapped bales as well. Um, although it's a bit awkward to get them on. And those big tines, they can lift about a ton each. So with the little 35 uh, I have no problems. The capacity of this fork is uh, far more than the capacity of the tractor, so I'll never break it. Well, hopefully not. But uh, I'm going to make another one of these today because I have all the bits. I've been collecting them for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, and uh, I finally have all the pieces I need to make another one. Okay, so this is all my parts. I got a piece of really heavy wall box for the bottom, and have my two McHale handler legs and the two tines and I have another McHale handler leg which is pretty heavy box as well that'll do for the top section and I'll come up with the uh, pieces uh, to mount onto link arms afterwards Forget your safety glasses. Okay, so we're ready to go welding. Um, I just have little timber blocks placed under it just to keep it off the ground a bit. And the floor is quite level, so it should weld up square that way. I just want to check this for a square here. It's in there. That's pretty much perfect. So what I'll do is I'll tack all this together. Obviously it'll have to be pretty big tacks, you can't just put a little snot on it, it won't hold it very steady if I do so um, I'll tack the whole frame together and then just make sure it's properly square and then weld it up properly Okay, so I have to weld in the top cross member now. Right, so I have that piece in there, it seems to be held in there itself anyway, so I'll just weld that up now.
There's a big gap there, so I'm not sure whether that'll be a good weld first time round, but you can touch it up after. It doesn't look too bad, slight little bit undercut, but uh, but that looks okay. Now, when I have a big gap like that, especially when you're welding two bits of box together when you have the rounded edge, what I like to do is just put a small bead, a thin bead weld, but a quite deep bead, just in along them first. Okay, I just stopped halfway along there because I ran out of the rod. And once I have a thin bead across bridging the two pieces, and then go across and put a wider bead across it, uh, again on top of that that really stitched both of them together. I found I always found that made a quite a strong weld for me anyway I'm not sure if that's the uh, way they do it in the industry, but that's how I do it